woman life freedom. It's the power of a female-led revolution. And of these protests is that they have been female-led. It's a female-led, what I think can be the first female-led revolution of our time. And I I'm seeing the first female-led revolution of our time. Um, and, um, and I... It is different already that yes. women are leading. They've been a part of Upright. They are leading yes. this current one. Women have managed to galvanize Iranian society at large. They've galvanized Iranian society as la at large. As and women have managed to galvanize people and have Iranian society at large understand that intersection of their rights. So uh, the first group of people who really galvanized Iranian society at large into this. And it has galvanized Iranian society at large. And what it did is it galvanized Iranian society as at large, as I mentioned, the spark for this was a young woman being killed. And the engine of it was women. Though the spark and the engine of these, this revolution has been women, but the spark and the engine has been women. Women first took to the streets, took off their headscarves in peaceful protests, set them ablaze, cut their hair, despite the risk of being raped, imprisoned, beaten, sent by women and girls taking to the streets, taking off their compulsory hijabs, burning their hijabs, um, cutting their hair in protest, dancing on the streets. Women have taken to the streets and are not only removing and waving their headscarves, but setting them ablaze and cutting their hair in protest. Women taking to the streets and not only taking off their mandatory headscarves and waving them in protest, as they've been doing in December 2000, starting in 2000, December 2017, but burning them and um, setting them ablaze and cutting their hair in protest, dancing in the streets. Schoolgirls have taken to the streets, removing their compulsory hijabs. Seeing the resilience of those girls protesting against their government, government at, at like the ages of 12. Young schoolgirls are removing their mandatory head coverings and chanting, we don't want an Islamic Republic. 12 year old girls going out into the streets saying, we don't want an Islamic Republic. Girls as young as 12 saying, we don't want an Islamic Republic while unveiling. Their courage was contagious. That level of courage was contagious. Their courage was contagious. This contagion of courage. This type of courage is really, un we haven't seen it in 44 years. Mothers, sisters, daughters being outraged. And how can that not pull on the heartstrings of men in society? And that's, what's, that was, that's what we're seeing. I think, you know, men are joining in. Then labor unions and other groups started joining in, lots of men. It started smaller with women, then it spread to students. Men and women standing shoulder to shoulder for a feminist cause, for freedom for women, for freedom for women. For, to be protected, protected against gender-based violence. There are no laws to do that in Iran. They can't sing solo in, in, in public. They can't dance in public. They can't ride a bicycle. They can't become president. Well, they can't become president. Well, they can't become president. They have no control over their own destiny. And yet they're more educated than the men. They're fighting with peacefully campaigning against compulsory hijab. The moment they were released, they flouted these compulsory hijab uh, laws and said, woman, life, freedom. A journalist, dissident journalist, Sepi de Rolian, after almost five years in prison, came out, removed her mandatory he head covering and said death to the supreme leader. So this type of... <clears throat> According to the World Economic Forum's 2022 Global Gender Gap Report, Iran ranks 143rd of 146 countries. The West, they've uniformly been targeted at their own regime. They include death to the dictator, death to the Islamic Republic, 
Our enemy is right here. They lie that it's America. Because of movements like uh, the civil rights movement in America and Black Lives Matter and bodily autonomy, things that we all care about, and we understand the fragility of our freedoms. And that, I think, is resonating in a similar way that um, apartheid um, South Africa 